Hello crafters, I'm Jan B and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator. Today I'd like to show you how to do the bubble wrap technique and that's what this background here. This one I've used crumb cake and this one I've used cherry cobbler. Um, I'm going to do the crumb cake one again now. Um, the reason is because I thought this was a little bit on the light side and I think it's uh, it was down to the fact that my ink pad needed re-inking which I've done um, so I'm now going to test the theory. Okay so the cardstock you're going to need is the card base is crumb cake and that measures eight and a quarter by five and three quarters scored and folded in half then there's a whisper white layer, 4 inches by 5 and 5 eighths inches and you'll need a piece of crumb cake for the oval behind the love and you'll need a piece of whisper white for the love and a little piece of whisper white for the flowers. So the first thing I'm going to do is to show you how to actually achieve the bubble wrap technique bit there. So I'll bring over a scrap of paper, let's move that one out of the way. Uh, this is just a normal bit of bubble wrap and I've actually cut um, an envelope, padded envelope um, open and cut this from the inside. So what you need to do is take Vers whoops, take Versamark and just Put Versamark all over the bubbles. This is one of the very few things I don't normally worry about um, going over the my cardstock with the uh, embossing buddy because um, I'm not sure it would really notice even if you did get bits of uh, embossing powder stuck in the wrong place. But I suppose I should set a good example shouldn't I? Seems how it's within reach anyway, so okay, so there we go. Good practice. Right, so once you've got the verse mark on here, decide how high up you want it. I want mine approximately, it's a bit lower than halfway because I want enough room to, can't see that, can you? Um, I want enough room to get this into um, the area. So once I've done that, I'm going to place that just a little bit higher than halfway. Uh, obviously I've got bubbles going downwards. And when you press this, make sure that you do all the outsides. If I ever make a mistake on this, it's because I've forgotten to press around here. And I finish up with what I can only describe as a board patch. Okay, so pull that off. Leave that one on there, take that off. I'll move that out of the way because obviously that bubble wrap is sticky now. I'll bring another piece of scrap in and with my white embossing powder I will... Oh, I can see there's one piece here that I haven't actually um, pressed very well on my bubbles but it no big shape because um, the uh, sentiment will be going over it. You'll see in a minute I'll show you the bit that I've missed. Let's just get this away first. Okay, so that can go over there as well. Close that up. Now Can you see, oops, uh, these bits here? Oh, it's like go, looking at mirror writing, this is. Um, those bits there I miss. There's another one over here as well. I can see that one there. Those I'm not particularly bothered about because the sentiment will cover it. Not so sure about that, but it has to stay. Um, anyway, as always, I'm not going to do the actual heat embossing now. Um, I'll do that one later. 
Here's one that I did earlier. This one here. So it all comes up all nice and shiny. Um, so let's bring this sheet back again, I think, because I'm going to take my sponge and my crumb cake and I'm just going to go over my white embossed area and it just pops. Don't go too high here with the ink. Um, you are going to be putting ribbon over it um, but obviously you don't want to go too high. Again, so we keep that. Then, if you just take a piece of uh, kitchen towel and rub over that, it will just take off any excess ink from the embossing. You probably can't see anything on there, but there's a small amount. Okay, so that's that piece done. Now, for my top part, I'm let me see if I can bring the card back in. You can see what I'm doing. Right, okay, so I'm going to do some. Turn up the right way. The flowers that I'm using are from. The big flower is from the flower shop, and the little flower is from Petite Petals, both of which have their own coordinating punch to punch them out. Okay, now let's see if my ink pad comes up any darker. Definitely look at that. Obviously I had a very, very thirsty ink pad before, which accounts for why those flowers were so, so, uh, I think insipid is the only word I can think of to describe those. There we go. So we'll close that up, put that away. And the ribbon that I'm using is our natural chevron ribbon. So I just need enough to go over that around the back. So I'm going to let's get rid of this sheet again. We don't need that. So I'm just going to put some snail on this. if that's working or not. We'll soon find out. I think it's missing that bit there, but never mind. Um, now what I do with this, as you know, I don't have a particularly straight eye, so I will line this up with my grid pad and then decide, so I'm going to match up with this line here, so I know if I match the other side, I've got a straight line. Unless, of course, I go upwards, which wouldn't surprise me in the least. Well, there we go. I think that's, that's all right, isn't it? Straight? I think so. In fact, let's put some tape on there. Okay, so I'm going to put that on the front of my card base. my tripod a little bit close to me this time. I hope you can't see how scrunched up my arms are. Right, okay, let's just get this lined up. That's 
that's it, right? Now go down, stick. Do I have you with you there? Hmm. Bit of a bigger gap at the top there, but no worries. Okay, so that's that. And let's bring that back again. Um, so I'm going to do my sentiment there, first of all. And I'll put that away, didn't I? Bring my crumb cake ink back again. Oh, by the way, this stamp comes from the Seasonally Scattered set. So you get love, thanks and merry. Plenty of ink on that. Bring it a bit closer to make sure. Oops, oh dear. Good job we got two sides. Yes, that's on. Okay. So let's move that one out of the way. That can go there. So I'm now going to cut out this and the crumb cake oval. So I'll bring in my big shot and my magnetic cutting board. Right, so I put my magnet in first, one cutting plate. I'm going to use our um, oval thinlets. As you can see, I always cut my shapes out on my DVD box and inside with my magnets and as always I can't count from the outs inside out the smaller the die the smaller the number so I'm going to use numbers two and three here so number three is going to be the crumb cake and number two is going to be my sentiment Yes, that looks straight. Uh, right, and second cutting plate. It's quite a crunch. Let's move this out of the way. That's my larger piece, that's my smaller piece. And what I did round the um, edge here, I used the, um, I'm not sure, it's, I'm sure what we call these, um, but we have lots of templates where we can use for piercing holes round. They fit exactly the same as the oval um, dies. So just bring that over and that just need to the, with the black line yes you can see that with the black line just line that up with the outside of the oval hold it very very steady and with your piercing tool which we have here just go through and pierce through the holes It's a very, very simple thing to do, but my goodness, it, the effect of it makes so much difference. The first card I did like this, I didn't do this bit, and I thought, hmm, there's something missing. And I thought, oh, let's try doing this then, and it finishes off lovely. Well, I think so. There we go, nearly done. There we go, that's it. Let's move that one out of the way. Move that. And with this, 
put that one back there. I don't know quite what I did with the other one, but... Right, to stick this onto here, I'm going to use a snail. And then I'm going to put that onto my card with dimensionals. This is going to be four. Pop those there for the time being. that in the centre. You could put it at an angle wherever you like, however you think it looks best. And then I'm going to put that one back where you are, that's it. Um, and then I'm going to use my crumb cake ink again to make my large flower. And my small flower. And then the two punches to punch those out. Oh, I've just found the other die, oval die. Okay, and right. I forgot to mention, with these um, uh, stamps from the flower shop, the petals are not even, but they do match up with this. So these petals aren't even, but to make sure that you know where you're um, having to punch out. If you mark the back of your stamp, in fact let me take that off because you can't see it very well now. I've had these quite some time. I mark mine with an arrow and whenever I'm stamping I make sure it's down at the bottom so that when I come to punch it out I should be able to just put my punch onto my paper and it will line up. Just like that. Yes. So that's that one. And then the small one, all the petals are identical, so just punch it. Whoops. It's a lively one. Okay, so I will take my pencil, just curl this round very slightly, give it a little bit of uh, dimension, and then with the little one, if you've ever seen me do this before, come on up you come. I just place it into the palm of my hand, use the end of my piercing tool, don't use the wrong end, whatever you do, and just pop that down, and that really pops up nicely. I'm going to put the big one onto my card using dimensional. Now, to decide where this goes, I always cover up one of the existing flowers because I feel that I've stamped them down in a nice design. I think that I must be able to put one of these on, one of these two, and it would look good, rather than doing it somewhere so that it's going to finish up with end ones. Matter of choice. Right, okay, I'll bring it a bit closer because I don't like to let any of the underneath stamping show. And this I'm going to put on with a little bit of Tombow. Okay, that's there. Use this paper piercer to just give it a little bit of a press so that it sticks out. And then to finish off I use some pearls. Oh, I 
we'll take one large one for the larger flower. Oh, come on. That's it. So that one goes there. And then I use the smaller ones for the smaller flowers. Stuck to my finger that one. Oh, that's better. I very rarely ever use um, the little diamantes on my cards. I do prefer the pearls, I think. There we go. Let's pop those away again. This is something else that I keep in the DVD cases. It all files up very nicely on the shelves. Okay, so there we go, that's that one. I think I have to say that looks a bit better because it's a darker colour because there's more ink in the ink pad. Um, but I do like these neutral colours, I have to say. Anyway, I hope you like this. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed watching my video. If you have any questions about um, how I've done this or any of the techniques, um, please contact me because it's always nice to hear from you. Um, if you've enjoyed watching this, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the uh, subscribe button on the top right hand side of the screen. If you'd like to purchase any of the uh, products that I've um, shown you here, please click on the link below and that will take you to my 24-7 online stamping up shop. Many thanks for joining me today. Until next time, happy crafting. Cheerio!